two months ago, uh, we saw a really distinct uh, style of protest in the form of Extinction yeah. Rebellion. Um, I'm sure you've got a lot to say about this, but yesterday it was announced that the Met are going to try and push uh, prosecution on all of the activists, 1,100 activists, <laughs> who were arrested. Now, I saw a Facebook post that uh, referenced Mahatma Gandhi. First they ignore you, first they ridicule yeah. you, yeah. then they uh, fight you, then we win. Yeah, well, it's going to take a little bit of time to win because we're not just up against the state, nor even is the state the biggest enemy of XR or of the other groups like Me Too or Black Lives Matter. Even Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter. It's the, the, the problem is what, what the German philosopher Hannah Arendt called the temporary alliance of the elite and the mob. And we're up against a temporary alliance of authoritarian elites who, who keep their money offshore, who are heavily invested in fossil fuels, surveillance technologies. Yeah, these are what these guys, and of course, by, by investing in offshore, that is anti-taxation, they're effectively investing in anti-society. Now, that's on one hand, there are large numbers of people who need to believe that climate change is not real, who need to believe that uh, women are subordinate to men, because in their, their world will disintegrate in the next 20 years because of the changes we need to make. Your generation cannot go back into the box that my grandmother's generation of women could, had to live in, or gay men, or transgender people, or black people. It isn't, we are, you can't de-network a society. You can't unliberate a generation, okay? So XR, for me, is the latest iteration of the new kind of protest that is the, almost the son and daughter of 2011 and the Occupy movement. The Occupy movement imagined a new society and we assembled the forms of that society on the internet, the, the networks, and then we took it into physical space in the form of tent camps and square occupations. They didn't last, they were easily repressed. Extinction Rebellion, Me Too, and Black Lives Matter take it to a visceral level, to a granular level. If you think about what BLM is saying is that the wages of whiteness is that if a policeman arrives on a trouble scene, black people get shot and white people generally don't. That's why these racists spend all their time on the phone trying to call the cops on black people for selling water on the street. What they hope is the cop will arrive and shoot somebody and it ain't going to be them. Now, that's a very different thing than saying, I need civil rights. I need civil rights for Martin Luther King, for Malcolm X, etc., Stokely Carmichael. Was real, Angela Davis was, re, was a real thing, but to say you no longer have the right to shoot me when the cops turn up is a, is a different, more granular thing. It demands changes of human behaviour. Me too demands a change in human behaviour. I work in the theatre sometimes. The theatre is undergoing a revolution because of the demand of female actors and, and producers no longer for their physical invasion of their body space under the excuse of the theatre. Not just talking about director saying you know let's let's have a drink after work you know by the way you'll get a lovely part in my next film no it's about the actual physicality of theater is changing there's no a movement that helps people act through whether they have to do a sex scene or a sexual violence scene both these things exist in reality and should be portrayed on stage but now we have movements where we mediate those and we allow people to explore what is happening to them in a much more reflected way, reflective way than before. So what I'm describing there is the way Me Too is not just transforming kind of the agenda of feminism, it's transforming an, a real industry. It's also transforming um, parts of corporate life, not enough. There are now tests and courses, they call them the Weinstein test in corporate life. You, can you pass the test? Otherwise you don't become a director of this bank. Uh, so the amazing thing is that going back to XR, that we've got here, what's XR's number one demand? Tell the truth. We're at a philosophy festival where routinely people question the possibility of truth, but I don't, and I think that's another thing. There are truths, uh, they are provisional, they're scientifically verified, we need to fight for them. And I, I'm delighted that the uh, that XR uh, has, has come out. Of course the state are going to repress it, it's going to be wake-up time when some quite, you know, I'd say, you know, young, young and therefore inexperienced protesters. My generation of climate protesters and people I collaborated with and reported on have been trying to say, look, the cops will come. Soon there will be people arriving in your camps who look unstable. Uh, you need to deal with them you need, in a good way. You know, we need to educate and care for people. But what the cops then do is that they, like the evil doctor, they look, they look at the thing and they go, at an entity, and they say, 
occasionally, it doesn't have to be our police, it can be another country's police, it can be a private security company you've never heard of. They say, what are the, what are the illnesses and weaknesses of this thing? How can we make them worse? That's what happens. It's what happened to the, to the tent camp outside London Stock Exchange, that it was quite clear somebody was exacerbating all the problems and I don't believe it's the British state. I believe, you know, that the whole world is now a kind of outsourced. There's a kind of state mischief making that's outsourced to private companies we've never heard of. You, you saw it around Cambridge Analytica and its parent company. But we can, we can defeat them. We are millions of people. And what is more, they have sons and daughters who don't want to live in a burning planet. So in the end, we can have an argument. We Even with the kind of shittiest... Uh, uh, private uh, intelligence company. Do you really want to live on a burning planet with chaos, with millions of refugees unstoppably moving from the global south to the north? If you want to live in that planet, go on disrupting the climate change movement. If you don't, then it, it, even it might, you know, you don't like people with green hair and nose rings, fine. Just do it yourself. Lobby your Tory MP or your Republican Congress person. Tell them to stop funding climate chaos. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.